You know, it's interesting, uh, it didn't take very long, Jake, for the White House to react to Nancy Pelosi ripping up the yeah. president's speech and then just basically tossing it. Well, and it would be political malpractice for them not to do it. It was such a visceral moment. Uh, as uh, Dana points out, it was not planned by Speaker Pelosi. It was obviously done uh, because she was upset at what the speech was. Um, and the White House has now tweeted, Speaker Pelosi just ripped up one of our last surviving Tuskegee Airmen the survival of a child born at 21 weeks, the mourning families of Rocky Jones and Kayla Muller, a service member's reunion with his family. That's her legacy. That's a quote that I'm reading. Obviously, uh, when Speaker Pelosi is asked about this, she's going to say that she did not have an issue with those moments uh, about mourning families or families reuniting the Tuskegee Airmen, that what the issue was that she was upset, you know, upset about obviously had to do with the more partisan moments uh, of the speech in her view. Um, but uh, that is, of course, what we expected. And, and, and Dana Bash and I were talking about this. Before you ask Dana, I just want to point out, yeah. uh, Speaker Pelosi just tweeted I was just this. Gonna, that's what I was looking right, at. Ahead. I didn't mean to be... Go ahead. Yeah. Well, t there are a couple things. First of all, just staying on this topic, um, she uh, told F uh, Fox up on Capitol Hill uh, that the reason that she ripped up the speech is because that was the courteous thing to do. Yeah, she said that to a bunch of reporters bunch while of walking reporters. in the hall. Yeah, yeah. okay. So Why second, was it courteous? I, I guess know, as opposed to throwing it at him? I she, mean, something her, like that, her, I suppose. The, I, the point that she was trying to make is she, what she really wanted to do was a lot more... It was a lot harsher oh, harsh. than ripping it up. So that was the, the, the nice thing that she, that she um, sort of found to do. But separately, on the idea of the president, you know, kind of blowing off her attempt to shake yeah. his hand, this is what she said in a tweet just moments ago, and this is what you're referring to, Wolf. Democrats will never stop extending the hand of friendship to get the job done for the people. We will work to find common ground where we can, but we'll stand our ground where we cannot. So one of the things that I think is interesting here is that Speaker Pelosi has been really effective at getting under Donald Trump's yes. skin. Uh, and she has done, I think, generally speaking, a pretty good job at not letting his attacks get to her while he makes it very clear when her attacks bother him. Uh, he has little outbursts on Twitter and, and the like. I think we saw a little bit of the opposite here. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump is having a week that is frustrating lots of Democrats. They had their Iowa imbroglio, a fiasco in the Iowa caucus. We still don't know who won that, uh, that caucus, and we're still waiting for results. Uh, President Trump's approval ratings, according to Gallup, are the highest they've ever been, 49% approve. 50% disapprove. That's much higher than they were when he was elected. I think his approval rating was somewhere in the 30s and he still was elected. Um, obviously, as the State of the Union, tomorrow uh, he is about to be acquitted in the impeachment trial, an impeachment that Speaker Pelosi did not even want to do. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, for Democrats a very, very frustrating week. Uh, and I think that the speech which I think was partisan. I don't think it's odd that it was partisan, but it was a partisan speech, really got under her skin, and she let it show that it bothered her in a way that usually she's better I at hiding. I think that's such an astute point, because one of the reasons why Nancy Pelosi in the past three years has become an iconic figure, a real iconic figure among Democrats, is because she is the person, from their perspective, the only person... Uh, who should be and could be their leader to go up against Donald Trump because he she gets under his and she skin plays so it cool with her little hand with exactly. her applause with the hands like this the camera's not showing me so I go okay when she did that whole thing like you know when she did that yeah, when she came was, out of the White House with her sunglasses on and her big red yeah, coat there's all, iconic to liberals all, all all those moments her you know kind of taking the White House photo that the president thought made her look um, like an angry woman and oh she's and, pointing and, at him and, yeah and, across and, the and desk making it her 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 mm -hmm. uh, her profile picture on social media all of those things and tonight felt different and the fact that she that she even is saying that ripping up a speech something that she, there's no question that that kind of 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 reaction would be and has been uh, something that she admonished her own caucus not to do uh, it just it just shows you we're at a completely different place and they right haven't now. spoken since October they haven't the spoken since October and, she, and the president and, that and you can see when he first walked in normally they shake hands they you know, pass along the, uh, he, he presents the advanced copy of the speech. Uh, afterwards, he didn't even turn around to look at the vice president, who's the president of the Senate, or the Speaker of the House. He just walked right out. And at, at that point, as he was walking out, she rips up.
the speech. Uh, and I, ha I have to say, though, also, I mean, I see a lot of uh, Republicans on social media talking about how horrible this moment was, how Speaker Pelosi has done away with norms that have lasted for, for decades. And, I, I'm, you know, I'm not going to take issue with any of that. But President Trump has been doing, has done away with norms that have lasted uh, for decades as well, and many more of them. So, I mean, again, this is going to be one of these opportunities where we, one of these moments where we hear a bunch of people talk about how offended they were, and maybe they are actually offended. I mean, this was something Speaker Pelosi did that is certainly notable, and I could see people being bothered by it. But let's not forget also who she was reacting to and all the norms that he and, has And destroyed. let's also not forget the impeachment. Uh, the President of the United States was impeached by the House of Representatives. The in that very chamber seven weeks ago That's where correct. he was and the speaking. Speaker of the House, she's in charge of the House of Representatives and the Democrats. Uh, and as our White House team, our reporters and producers of the White House have been reporting, uh, it, it was very clear that this whole impeachment process has really gotten under the President's skin. Oh. Because even though he's going to be acquitted tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern, uh, he's not going to be convicted. He's not going to be removed uh, from office. Uh, he's going to go down forever as an impeached president of the United States. And that has clearly irritated I'm sure that bothers him. And, and, I, and I understand why it would bother him. But, I mean, we hear a lot of Democrats say this is going to Speaker Pelosi, he's always going to be impeached. This is going to be a stain on his record for the rest of his life. Bill Clinton was impeached. He's been given a primetime speaking slot in every single Democratic National Convention since 2000. So, I mean, it, yes, it will always be on his legacy. Presidents it are, irritates him. I'm sure it irritates him. It would irritate me, too. But I'm just saying, like, <laughs> pe presidents are able to go along and still be rather popular figures in their party, uh, even after they're impeached. Yeah, he's got, uh, you know, he's going to live with that, and even though uh, it, it, it irritates him. You're probably right. Within that Republican base and that Gallup poll that came out today has him at 94 percent job approval among Republicans. Exactly. And with every day that passes, uh, he is being told and being convinced by political advisors that as bad as it feels to be um, impeached by the House of Representatives and that be your legacy, politically speaking, in his quest to be reelected, maybe not so bad. Well, his, his approval rating among Republicans is up. Yeah. yeah. So it has had at least a limited effect of rallying Republicans around him, uh, not Democrats and not independents, we should point out, even in that same Gallup poll, but rallying Republicans around him. And, and again, we see his effort this evening, uh, a speech that I'm sure his his supporters, like Senator Santorum in the other room, really, really liked. Yeah. And the Republicans uh, clearly are happy with him, and they, they want him to get reelected. This is going to be an intense fight over the next several months.